Hello everybody, it's Andrew Hensicker. About to go live. I want to make sure maybe type in if you can hear me. Hopefully my computer's working. Today I'm going to talk about the flower calendar. Um, hello. Yeah, if you can hear me, just type comment that you can hear me and I'll just jump right in. Okay, today we are going, let me jump over here so I can see my screen, talk about the flower calendar and just at a kind of, I'll start at the higher level and dive on in. Um, just remember cannabis accounting and tax, 280E applies, and cannabis is still federally illegal, so a cannabis company gets no deductions or credits on their tax return. That said, they can um, take cost of goods sold because cost of goods sold is not a deduction or a credit. It's a return of capital. And so that leads us into code section 471, which tells us how to do this cost accounting. Pretty complicated, um, a lot of details. One thing, if you dive into the details of 471, it mentions that by the way, if you're doing gap inventory cost accounting in your day in, day out books, if you're a farm, you're going to get more deductions on your tax return. So it's in the um, grower's incentive to do this correctly. And so like, okay, what does that mean? How do we do this? The, the big four is not in the space. That means there's no industry guides. There's no one trained for years. There's no gap guidance. There's no uh, outside of our program tools or work papers. And so when I became CFO of Hi Fi Farms back in 2016, I was like, wait, how am I going to do this? There's no software. There's no, no anything. And so I had to accumulate knowledge and start building tools from scratch to, okay, how am I going to first get a chart of accounts? How am I going to do my month in tie outs? How am I going to make my journal entries? Then how am I going to layer that into cost accounting? What data do I need to get cost accounting? And so it kind of starts at the top and funnels its way down and keep working backwards and saying, okay, I need this, I need that. It started with my chart of accounts and because you can't do any of this without a good set of chart of accounts that are tailored for cannabis specifically um, cultivation in this um, example. So as we built that out, we were already doing our month in tie out system, which is basically a way to go in and find and fix errors, make sure all the other non cannabis accounts are tied out, um, find our errors, make our adjustments. So whether it's um, every balance sheet account or major P&L accounts, we'll do that first before we get into the cost accounting because we're going to need all of, many of those different trial balance accounts are going to come into play in our cost accounting. And so the next thing we're going to need, that's kind of the piece of the puzzle we're going to talk about today. We need a ton of information from the client and from the farm, things that are not numbers or amounts or from an invoice, money amounts. So what we do need are things like weights and units measure and counts and number of plants and yields on the crop and things like that. There's more farming data. And so to collect that information, we have a, a big, huge, what we call the client inventory grow template. One small piece of that grow template is what's called the flower calendar, which is what we're going to talk about today. So some of that data that we'll give this template to our client to fill out, it will include things like at the report date, say it's September 30th, we need a full physical count. How many plants do you have on the farm? Okay, how many bags of uh, flour do you have in the safe? We need to weigh each one of those by grams and pounds. Uh, how much trim do you have? So we accumulate all this data on the on the actual physical plants and then what we're going to do is come down to our flower calendar and we're going to really look at the the details of strain by strain so the flower calendar is going to give us the actual support for work in process so when we do our cost accounting the the answer we're trying to get to at month end we're trying to come up with a journal entry that will spit out numbers for inventory which is going to be whip and finished goods probably not raw materials just because that's going to be a very very small amount maybe they've got some seed raw materials um, but usually that's very low value so we're going to have an inventory amount which is going to be mostly whip and finished goods whip in this case is plants and um, finished goods is flour that's been tested and ready to sell 
And then the other part of our journal entry is cost of goods sold. How much of that product have we sold? And so we have to have a way to come up with equivalent units, um, some kind of system, so we can figure out when we come up with a journal entry that's made in dollars, how do we equate that back to things that are non-dollars, grams and pounds of equivalent units, so we can spread those costs out between whip, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. Um, so it's, it's quite a process. You need a lot of data. We start with that data at the farm. Meanwhile, we're doing month in tie out and then we get down to our cost accounting. So we need to make sure we have all these different pieces. So in our flower calendar, that's basically going to be a big tab in an Excel file that's going to have a whole bunch of rows depending on the size of the farm. So in our example, on this template, we've got um, eight indoor rooms. They're doing an indoor grow and then they have 10 outdoor huts and so in each one of those areas they're growing different strains and so in like room one we've got girl scout cookies jack skellington lemon kush um, electric punch and lemon ring so we got five different strains in room one and within each of those strain we have a number of plants like girl scout cookies 16 plants 13 lemon meringue, on and on. So we're going to make sure we have a good physical count. We're going to make sure we tie that out to the flower calendar and the totals match up. We always tie out everything, otherwise we'll get a ton of errors. Um, and so we're going to get that data. So for each room, we're going to know exactly how many plants of each strain and in total for the room. We're also going to know, we need to know what stage of the cycle, the full growth cycle each plant is in. Because without that, we don't know percent completion. And without percent completion, we can't get equivalent units or do cost accounting. And so, for example, a full growth cycle for most growers, indoor or out, includes veg stage, flower cycle, harvest, dry room, um, trim, cure stage, weighing stage, testing stage at the lab can be five days to two weeks and then finally ready for sale so that full cycle of all those different stages of a plant from the day you put a seed in a teeny little pot to the day you can actually drive it to the dispensary and sell it um, in this example we have a client 130 days i've seen these at, at 180 days i've seen them as low as 90 days um, for very quick cycles but so you have this spread of time and so you have plants all over the farm and a well-run farm will have strategies so their entire farm is not harvesting at the same time you want to have things so things are coming at any given point in time hopefully things are being planted today hopefully things are being harvested today hopefully things are coming back from the lab today that we can sell and so you have a very smooth cycle where all the pieces are going at one time when you're a startup that won't happen at first because they're going to be planting a lot of stuff, but over time that will make sense. So we need to know the stage of each grouping or strains. We also have to know what is the average yield for each strain. That will vary as well. And so our example, Girl Scout cookies, they think they're going to get a pound and a half of sellable pot, not a pound and a half of, of trim and stems and all that, of sellable pot. And so over time, as you accumulate data and you go through cycles, you can true that up. I find the farmers usually overestimate this number at first, but over time you go through, you plant Girl Scout cookies and you go through four cycles, you can see, oh, actually our average yield is 1.3 pounds. And so you can, this schedule will get better and better over time. And maybe the farmer thinks their full cycle is 130 days, but as we go through this over a few cycles, we realize it's actually 150 days. Um, so you start to get get that trued up and so the over more cycles as you get the data and fine tune it the schedule gets better and better um, then we'll go out down and looking at estimated yield each strain percent complete completion where depending at the report date where they are in the cycle that will spit out some equivalent units then we'll do that for many many rows and at the end of the time we'll get a big number of equivalent units in pounds of work in process. We'll do the same of actual pounds of um, flour that we weigh, and then also actual poundage that we sell. And that way that gives us a formula where we can actually allocate the cost on our trial balance to these various categories, work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold in a reasonable method that will hold up for gap accounting and also for 471 for the tax return, and they can maximize their, their deduction. Now, 
Behind all this, we remember we want to make sure they're counting stuff. We want to see good evidence of counts. We don't want them to say, oh, well, we enter stuff in metric the seed to sales system every day, and that's always right, so we don't need to count. Make sure you get handwritten people are out there in the greenhouse counting um, because you will find and fix errors every single month. That's just the nature of how farm works. You have people coming and going, high turnover, lots of people inputting the data into metric or biotrack or whatever the state seed to sale is. So just make sure you're having them um, count regularly and don't, don't let them say they're not counting. That is a kind of one way they can try to do illegal market activities or they can try to hide things or siphon things off. We don't go for that. We say, look, if you're our client, you're going to be doing counts. That's the way it is. And they should want to do counts. They want to have accurate numbers um, for their for their products. Um, once we take this data we accumulate, then we're going to jump back over to our trial balance, which we've already tied out the different accounts, rent expense, um, labor, direct labor, direct materials, um, indirect labor, packaging, soil, nutrients, fuel costs, electricity costs, other utilities. These are various costs. We're going to be allocating pieces of each one of those costs using our flower calendar and, and grow information. We're going to allocate those in into inventory and out of things like, like rent expense. Rent expense may be $1,000 this month, but we're going to take a piece of that, put it in work in process, a piece in finished goods, a piece in cost of goods sold. We also want to have a way to do that so that we keep the core accounts untouched. Um, so if the farmer's paying $1,000 a month for rent and you just did pull part of the actual rent and, and credit rent expense and move it to inventory, it's going to come up with some um, kind of wonky looking financials. You know, rent's going to show up at 200 a month for month one, and the farmer is going to be like, wait a minute, I paid a thousand. Why does it say 200? We don't like to have those conversations, so we, we figure out a better way um, to do that piece. We're going to make these allocations in the trial balance, not only using our data we collected in the flower calendar and, and the counts and elsewhere, we're also going to be looking at square footage on the facility or for to allocate certain things like utilities or rent or employee time. Maybe Joe tracks his time and he spends 65% in the greenhouse watering plants and 20% doing admin tasks. We need to know those numbers as well. So there's a lot of data to collect and um, toss around. One other uh, benefit of the flower calendar outside of cost accounting and we found this out um, we actually built this for cost accounting but once we built it um, I think a board member at one point so at, at our farm it was very typical we had a CEO and a management team running the farm we also had a board of directors we also had about 25 different investors we also had some equipment lenders and whatnot so we had all these various parties that were interested in in financials and cash flow and reporting and so with our flower calendar we could get at every single month end a very quick snapshot of exactly what's on the farm where it is what stage of completion um, when we think it's going to be sellable, which is a very important thing of interest to bankers and investors and board of directors. They want to know, yeah, when's the cash? You know, I see that the um, Girl Scout cookies got planted on August 9th. It's September 30th right now. When are we going to get money from Girl Scout cookies in our coffers? So this schedule, we can roll it out farther past the report date and say, okay, the dollars are going to come in, we think, November 1st from this strain. We think we're going to get about 1200 a pound based on current pricing in the market, and we can start to do some cash flow rolling forecasts. Um, very, very helpful as well. You can also use this data to make sure the seed to sale system is correct. So in Oregon, it's metric, state required. Their metric has to be accurate um, daily um, at your farm. They can come out to the farm at any time they want and check themselves. And so this, we're providing more support to help them make sure their crops are accurately in metric and their counts. So if you get pushback, um, we're, we're adding value as well on this. So we are also going to, um, Ashley is going to post um, our accounting guide here as well, Cannabis Accounting Guide. If you want more information or have questions, you can always message me here on Facebook or my email is andrew at cfoben.com. Um, let me see if I 
hit anything else make sure anyone else have any questions but again there's many different stages and processes and this again is only looking at cultivation what you'll find with many of your clients it's even more complex than that because they're going to process the ending flower into oil and they're going to have a processing license as well that brings in a whole new complexity then we're going to be doing transfer pricing over to the processor we need to track those units as they flow through the system um, so anyway hopefully this was useful to you um, if you are a solo accountant in this space you want to learn more check out dopecfo.com you can check out our podcast as well we talked to many student members in there as well about their experience at the end of the day if you want to serve this industry well you need a lot of knowledge you need a ton of tools and work papers we have those already built you can do what i did and build them yourself over a couple of years and kind of beat your head against the wall or if you really want to jump in quickly we've got a, a shortcut in place as well